Tyler. Hey yo, what's hell on earth down here? The pavement scorching. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Fox at Foxy Games underscore UK. Subscribe to the channel and follow via Twitter for your source of aggregate news, rumor, and video game discussion with an emphasis on PlayStation, but spanning a variety of platforms. And if you're new to the channel, let us know how you found us, and please remember to thumbs up if you like the video. Views expressed in our videos are those of third parties and do not necessarily represent the views of Foxy Games UK, and all relevant links can be found in this video's description. Now, I do hope you enjoy the brief snippets of music I often put in the intros, but I am definitely skirting on the fringes of copyright. But let's face the music and dance. Microsoft's lineup is weak. You know it, I know it, and more importantly, Microsoft knows it. Hence the recent revelation that the Redmond firm is on the hunt for entire game studios or even publishers. Now, you may think I'm kind of late with this, but really, I'm not. I simply really didn't care to cover this as a new story at the time because. For me, well, who else? This topic is the fodder of discussion on a podcast such as The Gamer Couch or Craig's Corner, shout out Craig Harris, but I was asked multiple times for my opinion on this and the channel exists for the fans, so who am I to deny a reasonable request? So, which developers or studios could Microsoft realistically acquire to help fix their first party problem? The following article is an opinion piece published via PCGamer.com and I'll read the article verbatim and I'll interject when and where necessary. So Microsoft is on the prowl. Sounds rather perverted, doesn't it? Xbox boss Phil Spencer said in November of last year that the Redmond Behemoth is looking to improve its ability to create content, which is to say to increase its first party games output. One quick and easy way of doing that is to hoover up studios or publishers and rumors of potential buyouts, some wild and others more grounded quickly surfaced following the proclamation. Microsoft's primary goal is to make up ground against Sony, whose first party orientated approach to the PlayStation 4 console has served it well, but Microsoft's ecosystem approach to the Xbox makes the relevant really matter to those of us who call PC home too. Microsoft has had mixed luck with internal studios, cause for every turn 10 there's a Head. And so watching how the future unfolds for whichever studio ends up in its grasp will be interesting in its own right. But any big studio purchase could send massive ripples throughout the gaming industry. Imagine if you will Cyberpunk 2077 as a Windows Store exclusive for the PC. Try not to faint. So we're Microsoft and we're bored. We've got the car keys and a few bazillion dollars in our purse and a powerful urge for something shiny and new. So let's go Windows shopping starting with Bioware. Of course, this is all rather silly speculation, but a rumor about Microsoft buying EA made the rounds recently, but what if Microsoft would rather take smaller bites? The Bioware name still carries some weight, but Dragon Age has faded and the Mass Effect Andromeda flop took a real toll. Meanwhile, the exclusive Star Wars license that was supposed to be a crowning achievement for EA is looking more and more like an albatross, and that may have it looking for a quick out if Anthem stumbles when it launches. There's a little bit of history there too, I mean Mass Effect was originally an Xbox 360 exclusive, it's a tenuous link, yes, but Microsoft has published a Bioware game before. The bigger question is, would EA ever part with Bioware given its long history of closing studios and a little history of selling them? That seems unlikely. So the odds are 3 out of 10, nobody gets out of EA alive. And then there's Ubisoft, this could be a real coup. Ubisoft has well-established franchises between Assassin's Creed, The Division, For Honor and Watch Dogs and a legitimate eSports sleeper in Rainbow Six Siege. It has also got the Ubisoft store which isn't exactly Steam but brings a lot more credibility to the table than Microsoft's current storefront. Ubisoft is an all-in-one solution and it can be taken alive. Therein lies the risk though. The Guillermo gang fought like hell when Vivendi tried to claim it and there's no reason to think they wouldn't do the same if Microsoft comes a knocking. And even if Microsoft does get a deal done, there's no guarantee that critical Ubisoft leadership and creative talent will stick around. But as a turnkey solution, Ubisoft offers more credibility or at the very least is less actively disliked right now than EA and at a lower cost and a more flexible and comprehensive and less rockstar reliant solution than Take Two. Any major publisher takeover would be fraught with risk and immense complications, but if Microsoft is going to make a play for one, 
Ubisoft would be a good bet. Now the odds are 6 out of 10 for now but 7.5 out of 10 in a year when the bugs are fixed. And what about independent studio CD Projekt Red? Now CD Projekt doesn't have the variety of Ubisoft but it does have unparalleled credibility with gamers. The Witcher is one of the biggest RPG franchises of all time and Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most anticipated games to come along in years and Gwen is a great in to the competitive gaming scene with a demanding but dedicated audience and boundless room for growth. Ironically the role jewel in CD Projekt's crown is the element that likely really is of least value to Microsoft. Really it's a non-Steam digital storefront people seem to like but it's DRM free take on digital game sales is the polar opposite of Microsoft's ultra controlled approach. I'm talking about GOG. If we're lucky Microsoft spins it off if not well it was fun while it lasted. In broad strokes a project red Really acquisition would reflect Microsoft's successful Mojang deal, unexpected, expensive as hell and needing a largely hands-off approach in order to work but it also is riskier. The Witcher and Cyberpunk obviously don't have the universal appeal of say Minecraft and they also don't really exist because CD Projekt Red has repeatedly said that Geralt's adventures are over and Cyberpunk at this point is nothing but hype. There's also the real danger that key creative staff would leave but if all somehow went well a CD Projekt Red pick up would give Microsoft a degree of console exclusivity clout that is currently lacking. The odds are 2 out of 10 because no matter how Microsoft twists and turns, Geralt's wild fantasy sexcapades education edition just is not something that's going to happen. Now what about the godfather of the industry or at least one of them, Electronic Arts EA. This is a rumour that surfaced last month but it's not a good fit. EA has a big list of desirable properties in its stable but there's a lot of chaff to deal with as well that doesn't bring any immediate and obvious benefit to the deal. More importantly Microsoft can score points against Sony simply by entering into an exclusive publishing deal for games developed elsewhere. And as Michael Pachter told Polygon in January much of EA's value comes from being a a multi platform publisher, which would go immediately out of the window in the case of a Microsoft acquisition. EA is simply too valuable as it is to risk messing with it. Odds are about as likely as a pregnant Krogan. You'll probably hear lots of noise, but it ain't going to happen. And then this Operation Buyback Bungie sounds like a game in itself, doesn't it? More than a decade after escaping Microsoft's grasp, would Bungie be willing to return? It's a universal truth that everybody has a price and Microsoft can afford to foot some pretty hefty bills. Reuniting Bungie with Halo would be a big PR coup and in an ideal world would afford Bungie the resources required to build a fully scoped Destiny like game in the Halo universe. Reboot sequel standalone alt universe whatever approach they took Microsoft could end up with one of the biggest most visible and most viable FPS games on the planet if all the pieces come together properly. Bungie split from Microsoft for a reason though but it didn't appear to be particularly acrimonious parting at least and while there are a lot of good things to be said for freedom the seas of independence haven't been entirely smooth. A Mojang like arrangement of semi autonomy might go a long way forward convincing Bungie to kiss the ring but there's a big stumbling block to overcome in the form of Bungie's contract with Activision as detailed by the LA Times, the contract covers four games plus DLC and varying types for each with a tentative release schedule running through to 2020. Now contracts can be bought out but you can bet that this one wouldn't come cheaply. The odds are 7 out of 10 not because of any supporting evidence, I just think it's a good idea. Now Epic, Epic, Epic Games hmm. and they also have the Unreal Engine and Microsoft of War of Epic's hands a few years ago and reuniting games with studios has obviously publicity value but what really makes this attractive is the popular and powerful Unreal Engine which Microsoft could license or not as it sees fit and Fortnite Battle Royale a multi-platform battle royale game that's growing large in PUBG's rearview mirror. The combination of a ubiquitous technology and a killer app makes Epic a tempting target and Epic could certainly use the resources that Microsoft would bring to a deal. And as a side bonus it's an opportunity to convince Tim Sweeney that a UWP Universal's Windows program doesn't actually suck or conversely Sweeney could convince Microsoft that it does suck and that it's time to let go. Odds are 5 out of 10 they're never going to convince Sweeney that the UWP doesn't suck. 
and their studio MDHR. Cuphead sold more than a million copies on PC alone and more importantly demonstrated an impressive and unwavering commitment to artistry. Microsoft clearly believed in the game helping fund its production. Buying MDHR would be a relatively small move but even these guys would make an impressively glittery jewel in the exclusive to Xbox crown. The odds are 6 out of 10 because if Microsoft doesn't, Sony probably will. And IO Interactive, Hitman, an absolutely outstanding example of a game that's both compelling as a single player experience and an effective live game. It also really seems like a small miracle that developer IO Interactive retained rights to the series after parting ways with former owner Square Enix and going independent. IO might feel a little twitchy about falling under the sway of a new corporate overlord, but with the proper resources and support, Hitman could be rebuilt, rebuilt really into Tomb Raider side's flagship franchise and give Microsoft a deep game with a strong PC fan base. Odds are 5 out of 10, it could go either way, but if they blow it, they don't get to try again. And Hidden Path Entertainment. Now, some of you may not have heard of Hidden Path Entertainment. Hidden Path is a for convenience, if nothing else. The studio behind Defense Grid is based in Bellevue, Washington, which makes it practically a next door neighbor anyway, and it was responsible for the HD remake of Age of Empires 2 back in 2013. That's maybe not the most compelling reason in the world to acquire a game studio, but it's literally like right there. Odds are 8 out of 10, I mean it's freaking right there. And now Valve. Gavin Newell is a former Microsoft guy, but he's been out more than 20 years, which is almost certainly really means that any familial connection he may have felt at one point is long gone. He's also one of the richest people in North America, quite literally, there's no financial incentive that Microsoft can dangle, and a hostile takeover is complicated by the fact that Valve is a privately held company. And without wanting to sound mad about Half-Life 3, Microsoft is, really, in the market for a game studio, which, sorry for everyone, Valve really isn't these days. Its most recent real game was Dota 2 and believe it or not that came out five years ago. Valve has dabbled in a number of different interesting things like steam machines, VR and maybe there's a technological hook in there that Microsoft finds appealing, particularly if it's serious about Xbox's ecosystem and not just looking to move consoles. Now none of which really matters anyway. Newell doesn't want to sell and there's no indication that he does. The odds are, well, there's more chance of Half-Life 3 suddenly appearing on Steam tomorrow. And that's where this opinion piece slash article ends. Now look, it is pretty sad that Microsoft do not build their own internal studios like say Sony did when the in the PS3's era, a time when it was getting trounced commercially and critically by Microsoft's Xbox 360. But rather than open the already in the red wallet and simply buy up studios to plug the hole, Sony doubled down and pushed back, slowly changing the perception of the overpriced, difficult to code PS3. Now, Valve boss Gavin Newell publicly called out P PS3 as, and I quote, a waste of time. So, what's stopping Microsoft from owning most of the IP that is exclusively released on the platform? Well, Microsoft tends to rent exclusivity and when the contract has reached its limitation the games always seem to end up releasing on competitors platforms wow which takes away from the must-have mentality doesn't it really required to make any entertainment device a resounding success globally there's even been mass speculation regarding a certain company that was actually a major player in the console space Sega, and though this may upset those who have a deeply disturbing, profoundly intimate relationship with their game console, Microsoft acquiring Sega, hmm, not a chance. Though I actually tweeted this yesterday, follow me at foxygames underscore UK, quick plug there, a killer move to counteract Sony's Shenmue 3 exclusivity would be Microsoft negotiating a Shenmue 1 and 2 remake exclusively, or at least timed, for Xbox One, and it could appear on Game Pass day and date, along with the rumoured Vanquish sequel, again said to be exclusive to Xbox slash Windows 10. Now, I do not expect Platinum Games the studio behind Vanquish to have anything to do with pro the project, given the strained relationship leading up to and after the scalebound fiasco. Notwithstanding, Sega are a Japanese company owned by Sami, another Japanese company, and the simple matter of a fact is Japanese companies do not historically sell to foreign companies, i.e. outside of the Asian market, to acquire or merge, though Japanese companies do often partner, but retaining the majority share and pretty much the overseer of 
productivity. Microsoft seemed to have learned absolutely nothing from the OG Xbox nor Xbox 360's tenure, considering that Microsoft have been in the console space since 2002, that's 16 years, enough time to build a solid video game uh, portfolio, a decent foundation of IP. The company really should be flooded in Xbox IP. But as we have witnessed over the past decade or so, uh, particularly during Xbox 360's lifecycle, Microsoft would rather open the checkbook and simply buy their way into the market than create, build or construct. Video games is a major pillar of a game console, not media apps, not TV and certainly not music apps. Sure, these things have been available on most modern consoles or devices, but the difference is the key differentiator is the emphasis, what you promote, your message to the consumer needs to be absolutely clear from day one that you are a game company first and foremost and everything else is secondary. Microsoft did not do that with the Xbox One reveal. They completely sidelined gaming. They tried to implement draconian security measures, really a front for total consumer control. They angered the pre-owned retail market and Microsoft continues to anger the video game retail market today with Game Pass. All these blunders have cost Microsoft dearly and absolutely ruined relationships. Mindshare is such an important aspect of convincing would-be consumers that they need your product. Sadly, all Microsoft served to do was to force a sizable portion of the Xbox fan base to gravitate to Sony's PS4. Hence, almost 80 million PS4s sold compared to a estimated 35 million Xbox Ones. Now that's pretty stark, Tony. Microsoft is no longer the Iron Man in the console space. So the question is, which studios or publishers would you like to see Microsoft absorb? Let us know in the comments below. Because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video. But let's continue the discussion in the video comments. For more PS4, Nintendo Switch and Xbox coverage, subscribe to Foxy Games UK and if you found any information in this video at all useful, why not hit the like button and help us reach more like-minded gamers by sharing this video. And for just one pound, one dollar or one euro or whatever equivalent, join the Foxy Games UK Patreon, become a member and help the channel grow. You'll find the link in this video's description. Thanks for your kind support. And so there we have it. Quite exhausting really. Until next time, always remember, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching everybody.